students today we will study the bishops candlesticks it is written by norman macnell first of all we will discuss about Norman Macmillan was born in the year 1870 and he was an actor and a dramatist as a playwright he is known for the play the bishop's candlestick he has written the play only the bishop's candlesticks now about the play it is dramatic adaptation of a few chapters of victor hugo's classic novel which novel less miserables it brings out an individual's miserable plight in the cruel agents of law and his eventual liberation due to the invention of a noble soul then the main characters in this play bishop for some shares bishop's sister and mary the maid servant summary now let's discuss the summary of this play as the play starts as the curtain raises we find bishop's younger sister parsom and the maid servant mary in the conversation while the soup is simmering on the stove parsom is very worried about her, her brother the bishop who is out in the cold when parsom gets to know that bishop has gone out for the sake of mary's mother parsom bursts out in anger Parsom's impatience and dissatisfaction stem out of her excessive love and fondness of for her incorrigible brother. What do you mean by incorrigible? Incorrigible means habits that cannot be changed. so parsom consider bishop to be very incorrigible why because whatever bishop wants bishop wants he always do the same does the same the bishop who has already sold his estate furniture and other valuables and spent all his savings in helping the poor and needy the latest victim of his generosity is a pair of silver salt cellars which have been sold to help an old lady old woman mia gringoa to pay her rent although the landlord was very genuine person still he didn't wait for even for a single day so then <clears throat> as bishop was having no money he had to sell the silver salt cellars parsom got to know about the silver salt cellars at the time when she told her maid servant mary to put the salt cellars on the table at that time parsom informed her which salt cellars ma'am the silver one they are sold parsom was completely taken aback they are sold who sold them and for what we have enough food to eat we have everything at present then who sold the silver sticks uh, who sold the salt cellars then mary told her that just to pay the rent of mia gringoa bishop sold the salt cellars Mary got very angry at that time by hearing this that the salt cellars are sold now. Now Bishop appears on the stage, and we have a fairly good idea of his character and work. As soon as the Bishop arrives, he sends Mary away, saying that her mother is better now. 
He even gives her comforter to her protect herself from the biting, <coughs> biting cold outside. This gives Parsom an occasion to take the bishop, her brother, to task for being foolishly generous and warns him that he will soon have nothing left if he goes about giving everything away. The bishop good humouredly argues with her to justify his actions, saying that there is untold suffering, pain, and misery in the world. You see your candlesticks gone next gives him the idea that the massive silver candlesticks, which were his proud possession, a gift from his dying mother, would some day come in handy to help someone in need. Now person takes of him leaves of him for the night and the bishop sits down to read even the clock outside strikes a midnight hour. The convict enters stealthily and seeing, seizing the bishop from behind, demands something to eat and threatens to slit his throat if the bishop raised an alarm or called the police. Bishop, the convict was very hungry since days and he told bishop that if he made a sound he will be a dead man. Keeping cool, the bishop, in his all his heavenly kindness, pity and sympathy, addresses the convict as son and tries to make him feel at ease and secure even as he wakes up his sister Persong to serve some food and wine to the convict. Persong again got very angry that at this midnight we are to no sleep today. We always have, have to help um, other persons whole night. The bishop also calms down the visibly shaken person. After the convict has, has had his supper, the bishop, the bishop engages him in the conversation and draws out from him how he had turned into a criminal and how he was a victim of circumstances and a colossal society and cruel law. The, the convict tells him what hell he had undergone in the last 10 years. He considered the convict considered jail to be the hell. Why? The bishop holds out hope for the much tortured and battered soul of the convict through re religion and word of God and bids him good night. Next morning, Persom finding the silver candlesticks and the convict missing from the bishop's room, raises an alarm and asks the bishop to inform police. Call the police, call the police. Why? Because the candlesticks are gone now. He has stolen your candlesticks. You are like that only, bishop. Now, the bishop is hesitant to do so because the poor man would be sent to jail the hell again. Because bishop knew each and everything about the convict, he was very tense that if you will inform the police, the police will take him to jail again. Soon a sergeant complained, accompanied by the two soldiers and the convict in chains appears on the scene. They have come there on finding the silver candlesticks in the convict's coat. The bishop, instead of having the convict arrested, much as Persom would like him to do, saves him by saying that the man was a respectable friend and he had given him the candlesticks as a gift. The convict is touched, moved and inspired by his magnanimity of the bishop and promises to mend his ways and reform himself to begin a new life. The bishop blesses him and actually gives the candlesticks to him and shows him a safe and secret path to Paris where the convict could start his life afresh and lead a good and respectable life. Now. Let's discuss the theme of the play. It just tells us a tale of deep human significance for it deals with the issues of crime, sin, and redemption and we get to know how an innocent man becomes a hardened criminal because of circumstances and apathic society and law. 
we also see how religion with its fundamental values of oneness and the equality of all human beings, charity, benevolence and empathy can set a sinful soul free so that a life full of joy and happiness becomes possible. Now the message the message which we get from the play it conveys the message that goodness dwells in all human beings and no one is born criminal or sinner. Unfortunate circumstances and apathetic society turn one into criminal. Also it is a kindness, kindness, generosity and compassion rather than violence that can change a man from for the better. Provision for a respectable life for everyone and an understanding approach can contribute towards bringing down the crime rate and <clears throat> provide a healing touch to all criminals. This is all about the play. Now, what is the irony in this play? Well, first of all the term irony refers to a decrepancy or disagreement of some sort. The decrepancy can be between what someone says or what he or she really means or verbal irony. So the decrepancy can be between a situation that one would logically anticipate or that would seem appropriate and a situation that actually develops or situational irony. In Bishop's Candlesticks, the biggest irony lies in the fact that the law that is meant to be curative rather than healing adds to the malady and proves to be injurious. Thereby, rather than deforming, it turns an individual into a hardened criminal. So the play has a few other examples of irony. At first the convict refuses to have anything to do with religion and later he wants the bishop to bless him. The irritated convict asks the bishop why he leaves the door unbared so that anyone can come in, ironically forgetting that he himself had used the unbared door to get into the bishop's house. All this was about the play. Now there are two questions on the basis of this step in this play which you have to do. Question number one, why does the bishop refer to the convict as his friend when the sergeant brings him in question number two, identify the situations that can be termed as the turning points in the convicts life.